Hey folks, welcome back to Final Fantasy VII Replay. I know it's been a minute, but here we are once again at the bottom of the North Crater, and I think we're going to finish today. Let's, you know, stop running around doing side quests. It's time to save the world. We're going to go make our way down and see if we can stop Sephiroth, free Holy, and cross our fingers that Holy stops me here. Let's get to it. And let's, let's go with the party we started with. Let's take Barrett and Tifa. And I did separately you know, equip everybody and distribute the materia because we want to make sure everybody's prepared for whatever's ahead. Let's do this thing. Or as Cloud says, let's mosey. Is Mosey windy? I think it's casual. We're just sort of casually strolling towards the end of the world. Cloud takes the criticism and says, let's move out. I do like that the game sort of... So we have a party of more than three people. But because of the way the game works, we can only have three people active at a given time. So all the monsters we fought on the way down, looks like they're coming with friends. And so the game says, hey, you know what, you take three people down, everybody else is going to hold off the monsters. It just sort of explains what would otherwise be gameplay slash story segregation here. It is a major practice room. I think we'll be okay. Vincent wants a warm up. Alright, everybody. Yes, we're taking T5 Barrett. Head down to the Genova theme. Yeah, there would normally be enemy encounters here. I think I still have the enemy away materia equipped. Which is fine. That means we can just jump into the final series of fights. No need to waste HP or MP on. I guess they're not small fries at this point. At the bottom we find... Zack? Falling soldier is what the king calls it. Interesting. This is new. Definitely an odd thing. I just thought it was interesting. You know, you get towards the center or the bottom of the crater and you've just got like these blocks, um, almost like the Devil's Pillars, I think it's called, in the United Kingdom. Interesting, that was originally a 
Genova fight. I guess we're not getting it. I guess Zack takes the place of that fight here. Okay. Do you like how it's sort of representative? Cloud already faced his past, but this you know, symbolically shows him overcoming some of that. Well, that's a little glitchy. Everybody's here, and we see light imprisoned in the background by sort of a rocky structure. And Sephiroth appears. Pushing the party away. I don't think he's out of our league. <laughs> How funny would it be if Sephiroth actually honored Yuffie's request for a timeout? No, that's fine, Cloud. Take a moment. I'll wait. focuses on what's important. Holy is there. If they can beat Sephiroth, they've got a chance to stop me. It's not over yet. Oh, we get to save. Okay. I'll save in a separate file, just in case. Three groups. Who do we want to take? Stick with Bear and Tifa for our main. Um, red is pretty balanced. Stick Yuffie and Kishi. And Sid and Vincent for th party number three. Now Red's confident. No way will you will lose. This is his mission. Good on you, Red. Yeah, Sid doesn't want to die in this blessed hole. Come this far, it's all up to us now. Time to settle it with Sephiroth. see Sephiroth's transformed form. Some similarities to Genova. We have one, two, three, four, five targets. Oh, let's protect it right now. So we have to attack other parts. So the reason we split into parties, this was actually really cool. So all three parties fight this form of Sephiroth. 
you can switch to the other parties to do damage to specific parts. I don't know if we're going to need to do that. We might be able to get it with just this one. Switch. Right core is dead. Let's switch. This might be a little tricky because we've only got two people here. First things first, get protection up. Center core is now vulnerable. And we are back to Cloud Bear and Tifa. If you would stop reviving the top head portion, that'd be great. His trying to win is really interfering with my trying to win. in place. It's a whale on the core. We've got our fists. Every problem looks like a 
punching bag, I guess. And Tifa suplexes the would be god. Like you do. Design of Bizarro Sephiroth. It's like elements of Genova mixed in with. Now you might think it's over. It's not over. It's all over. Everything. Now it begins again with me. This means he's finished absorbing the energy and is now turning into his final form. Oh, this was so cool back in the day. Safer is supposed to be Seraph. Not because he's angelic. Not sure. his summon attack. Now some of the lyrics to this... So the song is called One Winged Angel. He's got more wings than that, but you know, one of his arms is a giant wing. Some of the lyrics to this come from Carmina Barona. Summon attack. Takes care of Pluto. 
which I still say is a planet. solar system. Up, guys, don't let it touch you. I'm sure we'll be fine. was a slog. As it should be. <laughs> All right, monsters defeated, Sephiroth defeated, and Clyde points out. We've done all we can. With Sephiroth gone, Holy is no longer blocked. And survival is up to the planet. Sephiroth gone, all we can do now is hope, says Tifa. No reason to stick around here any longer. Yeah, let's go home proud. You know, our party 
worked hard, struggled, got to the point where they're basically superheroes, and defeated Sephiroth, a more or less a god. So, good job, team. Take tomorrow off. But is he really defeated? Clap can sense him. Is that any brain glitches? This was also extremely cool back in the day. Representation within the live stream, maybe. I'm waiting for one more fight. First time since the Nibelheim reactor, we see him stagger. Gone for now. stream a familiar presence. Just hanging around while well, Cloud and Tifa almost fall into the crater. Oh, 
probably should be moving, which means they really need to get out of the crater. High wind has entered the chat. Lucky that the airship either flew down there or fell in there, depending on your interpretation, I guess. And there goes Holy. Oh darn, he says. Ship into something fancier. And we cut back to Calm, which is where Earth's daughter Marlene is with Elmira. Marlene senses the flower girl. Descending on Midgar. Kind of making a massive ocean building. Good thing they mostly evacuated the city. In comes Holy. Will it be enough? Doesn't look like it. of Sephiroth's theme. Well, Barrett, what do you propose? I don't think even the slums are safe. Not enough to stop Meteor. It's too close to the planet. We know from Bougainhagen that the planet has to decide whether or not it's going to protect humanity. What do we see emerging? A uh, life stream.
moving in to support Holy. And stop me. There we go. So yeah, that's the game. Roll credits. There is a, a post credit scene that we'll stick around for. We can add that, uh, that mysterious ending. You know, it, end, it ends the way it began, with us seeing you know, green floating sparks and Aerith's face in the background. So I, I, the implication, I think, and I don't think I'm the only one who interprets it this way, I don't know if it's exactly the official line, is that, you know, Aerith as a Cetra from within the life stream. You know, that that enabled her prayer to reach the planet to summon Holy, and then she worked from within the life stream uh, to, to mobilize it to help support Holy and stop Meteor. And that was it for, for uh, quite a while. That was the end of the story, as far as we knew it. Um, and then, years later, and you know, as computer computer animation evolved and the technology improved, there was a sequel uh, in the form of a movie called Advent Children. And it continued the story, and mostly dealing with you know people trying to move on in the wake of this giant disaster and you know, Midgar being destroyed and having to change how they approach energy, because I mean, you can't use Mako energy anymore. And you know, society recovering and people dealing with uh, you know, a disease with connections to Genova, but also for Cloud dealing with his guilt and his trauma about not being able to save Zack, or save Aerith. So definitely a giant case of survivor's guilt. But it was really exciting to, to have the story continue after this expansive game. I mean, this was, I don't know, what, 40, 50 hours? Which is a huge amount of time to put into a game. And granted, not all of that is story, but one of the things I think it does psychologically is you spend so much time, sure, progressing through the story, but exploring the world and going through side quests and you know, trying to help the party grow stronger, that you feel really connected to the characters. And, and if there's not a solid story there, maybe that doesn't hit the same way. But for me, anyway, there, there was that solid connection. And so it was a huge gut punch when you know, Sephiroth murdered Aerith because there, you're, there's this character that you've spent so much time with and I will admit I was enjoying sort of the developing relationship between her and Cloud and then it's it's cut short and when it first happens it, it seems abrupt like you, we're so used to death not being final Right, in video games, you use a phoenix down, you cast life, you bring the person back. But one of the creators of the game, uh, if I remember right, his mother had recently passed, and he wanted to incorporate that and, and the profundity of that experience into the story of the game. And that's why, you know, right after she's killed, you, you have Cloud talking about how he feels. It's just, you know, he's just, He's in shock, his hands are shaking, his 
throat is dry. Pause. We'll come back to that. Our epilogue to the game is 500 years later. And we see Red. Remember, his species is long-lived. So I think he's probably middle-aged at this point. But he's got two cubs. Which means his people, he, he found a mate, he's able to carry on. And we see that nature is thriving. has reclaimed what was Midgar. And I like to think you know, he's telling his cubs this story that we just experienced. Anyway, so, so yeah, so Cloud is there talking about what he feels in the wake of that tragedy. And at the time, I think I remarked, it, it, there, it is a little melodramatic or even corny. But at the same time, it has to be verbalized like that because the technology isn't evolved enough to really show what he would be feeling. You know, the shock in his face or, or tears or, you know, going pale or what have you. But in the moment, it seems, you know, that death seems meaningless. And then it's only later that we find out, oh, that it was part of her plan. You know, dying maybe or maybe not being a part of that plan. But she had a plan. And we end up being able to carry it to fruition. And we end the main story of the game with a shot of her face, you know, reminding us that you know, she sacrificed to help make this ending possible. Whew. Anyway, that's the game. What did you think? I know I enjoyed it, and what's next? I don't know. It would be interesting if, if folks are interested to uh, to do a, a playthrough with commentary of the remake. I, I know there was some exciting news that dropped a, a couple of weeks ago that there was a release date announced for part two of the remake, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is coming in February. I am obviously very excited about that. But yeah, that's the game. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed this, this trip down memory lane. And yeah, hope to catch you in the next video. Bye.